I'm here at the location of the infamous Mountain Meadows Massacre, where 140 people who were pioneering across the valley from Arkansas, wagons, families, and everybody from the late 1800s headed to California were actually pinned down and gunned down in this gully and in this valley in cold blood by Mormon settlers who were hiding up in the valley that ambushed them and murdered them here. And I'm on location tonight to do some spirit work and meditation to try and heal some of this area and see if we can hear anything on the spirit box and make contact. In early September 1857, about 140 people camped in this valley, families from Northwest Arkansas, uh, led by Captain John T. Baker. They were pinned down in this gully and in this valley, and uh, everybody was actually shot and killed except for 17 small children, and that's including all of the families, the women, and everyone in the party. The historical information about what occurred at this spot is really kind of muddied in the water because obviously the Mormon church does not want all of the information about what happened here to come out and the way that they tell the story is a lot different than the rest of the historians, especially the families and the relatives of the victims and the people from Arkansas that died innocently in this location. I think it's important to come back to some of these spots and I feel like that's a little bit of a purpose in my life right now is to be able to uh, come and sit and meditate with some of these places and help any souls or spirits or anything that might be having a hard time confused and trapped. I'm coming here alone to help uh, do this work. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I believe that these people are all taken care of and their souls are fine, but you just never know. And every time I do anything like this, I'm usually surprised. 140 people were crossing this valley here, north of Veo, south of Enterprise in the state of Utah. And they were traveling from Arkansas headed to California when suddenly up on these ridges came a bunch of people on horseback. On the hillsides and the ridges around this entire area, there was a bunch of, uh, there was like 50 Mormon militiamen that had rode up on the party. A lot of them were dressed disguised as Native Americans, pretending to be local Native Americans trying to raid and attack the pioneers from Arkansas that were crossing the valley. The Mormon militiamen were afraid that their settlements to the north were going to get raided and attacked by the United States Army, and they thought that the party from Arkansas was part of that group that was coming to attack them. And so they preemptively dressed like Native Americans in disguise, rode up on these ridges, and instead raided the families from Arkansas at gunpoint and pinned them down inside this valley. Over a period of time, there was a lot of gunfire, a lot of defensive maneuvers from the pioneers in the wagons from Arkansas. There was a 16 year old boy from the group that was able to sneak away through the gully and actually head out of town. He was actually found by another group of Mormon campers who shot the 16 year old on site. He was just a young boy headed to California who wanted to be a painter. The rest of the men and the women that were held hostage at gunpoint eventually surrendered and gave up. They were divided. The men were basically lined up here with the boys and the women were taken a few miles down the road. The men were lined up here and dispatched of and murdered on site. The rest of the women and many of the small children were taken a few miles down the trail this way, where we don't know what was done to them, but they were all killed as well. Even several years later, when they came back to the area in order to check on this region, they found bones, bodies, clothing, and debris from the incident still strewn all over the ground. And then this kind of ragtag monument was sort of piled together in a halfway attempt to sort of make a monument about what happened here. It's uh, really tragic. Here about 100 yards to the north of where that memorial site is, there was an execution of a man named John D. Lee, who was one of the ringleaders of the militiamen that caused this entire incident. And they don't really know what caused this entire incident, but on the day that he was brought back to this spot and shot by firing squad and executed, to the day that he died, he claimed that the entire militia was ordered to come and slaughter these people by the hand of Brigham Young himself. 
that's all speculative. But now we're gonna go back to the location of the memorial. We're gonna set up our ghost hunting equipment, our spirit detection equipment. We're going to get in the right mindset, say a small prayer and see if we can make any kind of contact. Many of the victims are actually buried right here on site and are marked with simple graves uh, around the circumference of this fenced in area. But most of the people were actually unidentified and a lot of the bodies were never recovered. I just feel like there's some unsettled energy every time I've come to this location about all of the, the tragedy, uh, the lost uh, people that were never recovered, the lies that were told that revolved around this and just kind of the buried history that uh, I want to try and sit here and see if we can discover anything about, uh, discover what's going on here, if there's anything going on here still today, and if there's anything that we can do to help. In the midst of all that, a lot of people want scientific evidence. And so I've brought some equipment. I'm going to show you guys the gear that I have. Duracell little box lights. They have like a leg that pops out the back. Uh, and you just click the button on the back and they'll turn on like a decent area light. I have a tri-field meter. A spirit box. We can pop this little antenna up on the back. And it's a radio scanner that scans through different radio frequencies and we can talk to it. And somehow if there's any spirits or uh, souls or energy sort of stuck in this area, a lot of times they can communicate through this little box. It seems like it's all kind of pseudoscience. Who knows if it's real or not, but it seems like they will answer through this box when you start to ask questions. And it's really fascinating. This night vision monocular if we see any kind of orbs of light anything in the sky ufos any other paranormal activity out in the valley that seems unusual we've got this night vision scope we can check it out this is a ghost pod rem pod what this does is anything that gets close to this it sets the alarm off so what we can do is set this like over here on the wall if any kind of anomalous energy gets near to that it will set that little alarm off and we'll be able to know that there's like a disturbance in the force then along with that i also have this little dvc digital video camera films in 4k uh, made by some little off-brand uh, zohulu and it films in infrared night vision and so we're going to be using that a little bit more because we're losing our daylight I'm all set up here to do the investigation and just like usual in these spots where there is interesting things that have occurred, I'm getting equipment difficulties. So here is my night vision camera and you can see it's actually working just fine. Um, but the problem is when I go to hit record, check it out. It, it's giving me a SD card error and it doesn't matter which SD card I put in this camera, it's giving me this error. Um, every time I try to use this night vision camera in any kind of an interesting location, this kind of stuff occurs. Either the batteries go completely dead or the SD cards just won't work. Uh, maybe this is just like a faulty piece of equipment, but I tested it at home and I literally just filmed a test clip of the dog a little bit ago before I left the house. And I filmed a test clip here just a second ago and it was working fine. But as soon as I went to start, uh, suddenly it doesn't work anymore. This is becoming a common thing, you guys, where uh, the equipment just does not work. It's, it's uh, failing. And then the spirit box happens to pick up a bunch of activity. So we're back to the black light again, sitting out here. Uh, the monument is right there behind me. The rim pod is right there over my left shoulder. And now I'm going to turn on the spirit box again and see if we can get anything to try and answer our questions. Okay, so now this radio scanner is going to go through these just random radio frequencies and then we're going to try to communicate and the idea is if there's any spirits or ghosts or anything paranormal or energies here, uh, any kind of time loops, uh, they can reach out and communicate through this device and we can hear voices kind of emerge through the radio signals. Uh, and we've had a lot of success with this before, even though it's just this simple little device, uh, it actually works really well. So, okay, the REM pod's right there, here we go. Um, I didn't film any of the prayer or the meditation, I took that really serious, I didn't 
had any technology on during that time. If there is anyone here that was a victim or a lost soul of a tragedy that happened here in the late 1800s from Arkansas, you can use this box to communicate with me tonight, or you can appear on camera, or you can touch this antenna behind me and let us know that you're here. If you're here, uh, please tell us your name. Can you please tell us your name? Sounded like Rhonda. Did you say your name was Rhonda? Can you please tell me your name if you're here and want to communicate with me through this box? I get, I have this, those spookiest feeling and in the trees over here to my left, I keep hearing like limbs popping, like something's moving around in the trees. I don't know if it's a cow, but the energy of this place is very heavy. If there's anyone here who has died, will you please let us know your name through this box? I swear I heard Rhonda again. If there's any messages that you would like to give us about what happened here, you can tell us through this box. It sounded like I heard the word hidden or hinder or something like that. I just felt the energy shift in this area like crazy. It just got very, very cold. I haven't seen a headstone that says Rhonda, but out of all of the victims here, most of them weren't even found. Okay, so this is interesting. Um, I made sure for a fact that I shut this gate. Look at this. It's like spring, like this. It's a metal gate. It's very heavy. Uh, it's super heavy. And you have to lift this, go like this. And I latched it like that before I started uh, the investigation. So we walk over here right now. I heard nothing. There was no sound. And uh, either I forgot or Somehow the gate is now open. I keep thinking I see things out of the corner of my eye and I turn and look and there's nothing there. This is one of the creepiest places that I've been. I've been to Skinwalker Ranch and a lot of other spots, but it feels like there's just energy moving around all over this place in the dark. It is very strange. Like I'll just be like walking along like this and listening and seeing if I feel anything. Uh, there's all these dead leaves on the ground that I'm stepping on. And um, then I will swear that there's like somebody standing over there in the corner. And so I'll turn to look uh, and there's just nothing there. Or I think that somebody's walking up behind me. It sounds like in the leaves. And then I turn. So I'm just going to try and film a little bit as I walk like this and see if we can catch anything um, lurking around here having to use this black light every time is not my favorite. Um, if you guys can recommend any night vision equipment that will work better, uh, please let me know. That camera fails every single time. I try to test it and set it up and it I mean, there's just like, there's just like energy shifting. It feels like stuff in the, out of the corner of your vision and shadows and weird stuff all over the place. Oh man, I just keep getting these chills. 
It is a strange spot, you guys. Okay, I'm gonna get the uh, night vision monocular. I'm gonna look at the EMP a meter, the electromagnetic readings. And that gate is even more wide open now. You guys just saw that. We were here and we just walked a loop around the monument here, around the path. Uh, and this gate is not easy to push open. It was probably closed to about right here. And now it's almost pushed all the way open. So I'm going to shut it all the way and then come back and check it again. If there's anyone here that would like to let us know of your presence, I noticed that you opened the gate. I don't think that was me. Feel free to open the gate again and let me know. That was really cool. Hello? Oh my goodness. Okay. This place has a really strange vibe to it, for sure. Something just moved through the leaves here, right up behind me real quick. Okay. Uh, that was interesting. It really spooked me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try not to get too scared here. I've been here most of the night. Uh, there's been nobody else around. I haven't heard any animals. I haven't seen anything else. I've got this little headlamp right now. Uh, just looking around and so far it's only been weird stuff with the gate getting spooked getting startled thinking that I see stuff moving but uh, all of that could just be the strange unsettled sensation and feeling of this whole place oh my gosh no <laughs> guys. um the gates open if somebody is here that is opening and playing with the gate um i know that i closed the gate twice now if you would like to open it um more please push the gate open more i think it's really cool actually i haven't been out through this gate you guys you guys saw me shut it on camera and then I've been over there the whole time. I mean, ugh, it's heavy. See how it stops itself? Look, see I'm opening and shutting the gate. Whoever's here doing that. How do I not hear that? Listen to how loud this is. Ready? It's like not even easy to unhinge here. See? And then it's sitting like this. That doesn't make any sense, guys. Now, here we are at the very end of our investigation, and this is the scariest part of all of it. The walk out, because the only path to get out of here is through the gully where everybody was hiding and where all of the terrorizing occurred. But I believe that the people that were here, that this happened to, that uh, they were good people and that they deserve to have their story told, the full story told. And I'm also going to display on screen all of the markers and the headstones of everybody that they could find and identify during the outro of this uh, and the honor of the victims. And also I dedicate this video in honor of everybody who died up here in the Mountain Meadows massacre and the innocent people and the lives that were lost for no good reason whatsoever and that their story needs to be remembered and told more than just a pile of rocks uh, like it was a good thing. Okay, right around here is where I kept hearing all that noise.